Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video I will show you five different ways to get data from Google Sheets with Excel VBA macros. And this is going to be a bit of a different video because I'm not going to be coding that much. So this table in front of you shows the five different methods that I'm going to show you. We've seen already in this channel a couple of them. So the first two are the easiest but they can only get public data. Now the other methods can also get restricted data but there are some caveats there and as an example I have a very simple Google spreadsheet with just some names and IDs. This data is public so it is shared with anyone with the link as you see here. Then we will see later what we do when it is restricted and actually I'm going to cover that in detail in another video but for now let's leave it as public. And let's see how each of these methods work. So let's go to the Visual Basic Editor and I have here already the macro for the first method and we've covered that in another video so I'm not gonna do it again I'm just leaving up here the link to that video. So this macro is just adding a web query to the active sheet or to sheet one okay. The important thing here is the URL. The URL that we are using to get the data in a query table is this one, spreadsheetsgoogle.com and then it comes TQ and it outputs the data as HTML. Then we need to add the key which is actually the Google Sheets ID. And if we have more than one sheet in the Google spreadsheet, we would also have to add the GID. But in this example we only have one sheet. So as you see here the JIT ID is zero. We don't need to add that. But if we add a sheet here, as you see the link, uh, now this is the sharing or the editing link, it has a, a different GID. So we would have to refer to that GID if we have the data in some other uh, worksheet or sheet. Now as you see here in the table again this method and the next one are using exactly the same uh, URL and this URL outputs the data as this here okay. This is actually that URL that we're going to use. It's just uh, creating an HTML table. So now if we run this macro we're going to add a query table with the data in this worksheet. This is actually a query table. We can edit the query or refresh and, and so on. Okay, if you want to know more about it, check the other video. And now let's jump to the second method. So the second method, if we come back here, is using the same URL. It's going to send a HTTP request. Well, all of them are actually sending a HTTP request, but I just call it a simple HTTP request to this URL here. And it's going to return also the data as an HTML table. And this method as well as the previous one can only get public data. So now let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor and here in module 2 I have the second example. The advantage of this method is that we can actually get only certain data and I've shown how to do that also in some other video. I'm gonna leave the link in the description and also up here. So basically what we're doing here is we need to send a HTTP request and for that we are setting the HTTP rig to a server XML HTTP object and then we are opening a GET request to that URL that we've used earlier and then we're going to set the response to the inner HTML body of the HTML of an HTML document and loop through the elements in the document to get the data. I've shown exactly how to do that in the previous video. So let's move to sheet 2 and run this macro and see how it is getting exactly the same data uh, just using a different method. Now as I said earlier the advantage is that we could set some conditions here to only get certain rows, certain columns, a particular cell and so on. So check the other video to know more about this if you haven't seen it yet. Now let's jump to the third method. So I'm back here in this table. The, the third method is using the Google Visualization API. And again, we're going to send a HTTP request to that API. And that's done in the same way. I've actually shown that in another video. I'm going to leave the link up here, how to connect and send a request to a web API from Excel. Now, the difference here is, as you see, the URL is completely different. It says docs.google.com, spreadsheets. Then we have to add a spreadsheet ID here. And then 
that stands for Google Visualization API, and we need to add a query. So the advantage of this method is that it accepts a query of the data that we want to query, actually. So let me show you how that works. We're going to move to sheet three here. So in module three, I have here this other macro. And again, we're going to need the, the key or the spreadsheet ID. And then we're going to need a query. But the query needs to be in Google Query Language, which is very similar to SQL. And for example, to get everything, we should say select all or select asterisk. Or I have here some other examples. To get only the data in column A, we would say select A. Or we could select data in column A and B, or A, B, C, etc. And here you see if we only want to get data in A and B, where the value in B is greater than 35. I got this from a previous example where I was uh, filtering by age. So it was getting the data for uh, users older than 35, for example, and, and so on. So, and then we need to encode that query. But luckily, we have an Excel function that is doing that for us. So the Excel function encode URL is encoding that query. This is actually adding characters to the string so that it can be uh, used in the URL. And now finally, we have the URL um, with the encoded query. And then we send, again, a HTTP request, as we've done earlier, to get a response with that data. But there are some problems with this method here. First of all, the response comes with additional characters that we need to remove. So there are actually 47 characters at the beginning. That's why we are actually getting rid of those 47. And then keep in mind that the response is going to be in JSON format. So let me run this. And as you see, we are actually getting the data as JSON which is um, very useful when coding in some other programming languages, but not for Excel VBA. So that's definitely a minus, but I've shown a method to convert the JSON data into a range in some other video. I'm gonna leave the link up here, but that's a custom method that you actually need to tailor to make it work, and it takes some time. And in that video, I also explained that there's already a JSON to VBA converter available on GitHub that is doing that for us. There are a ton of videos on YouTube explaining how to do that. The process is a bit time consuming, and I personally don't use it. So I actually don't really use this method at all. But I wanted to show you because it's out there and is an option. Probably not for Excel, but for some other programming languages is is used. Now let's jump to the next method, number four, which is using the Google Sheets API. And as you see in the table here, this is using, again, a different URL. So it is sheets.googleapis.com version four spreadsheets. And then we have to add here the, the sheet ID, then values, and here is the sheet name we want to target and the range in A1 reference notation. So it, this could be A1 through B8 or something, or, or, or whatever range we want to target, something like that, right? So that's very convenient to work with Excel. But on the other hand, there are some minus here with this method. Uh, the first one is you actually need an API key to make it work. And to get an API key, you need to set up a project in, in Google Cloud, and then you need to get the API key. The second problem here is that it also returns the data in JSON format. And this would work for a public spreadsheet, but if you want to get the data from a restricted spreadsheet, you would have to set up the authentication with Oath 2.0, which is actually quite complicated also with Excel. So let's see how that looks like. And as you see, it's very similar to the other macros. We have here the sheet ID, which is the key we were using before. So it is exactly the same. Then we have the sheet name, uh, sheet one in this case. And then we have the API key. So this is the key you need to get. And don't use this one because it's gonna, because I just set it up for this example. It's not gonna work. You need to set up your Google Cloud project and get your API key. And then 
you use the URL that we've seen, which is sheetsgoogleapis.com with the sheet ID or key and with the sheet name and the range that we want to get the data from. So in this case, we're going to just get data from A1 through A5. That's actually only the names, for example, but you could use any, any other range. And then, of course, you need to concatenate that with your API key. Otherwise, it will not work. Now, the HTTP request is very similar to what we've seen earlier. And remember that we're going to get the response as JSON file. So let's run it and see how that works. And as you see, we've got here the data as JSON. And it's actually a different format than the one from the Google Visualization API. So this one is more user friendly. And we've just got the data in the column A, which are the names. So name, Adam, Rose, Paul, Anna. Now, again, you can have a macro to convert this JSON to a range, or you can use also the JSON to VBA converter available on GitHub. Uh, but for example, for something as simple as that, I would just create my own macro to extract the data. It's great to use it with other programming languages like JavaScript or, or Java, but for Excel, I have other methods. And this brings me to method five, which is the last method. And method five consists of creating your own custom API. And the advantage of doing this is that you can set it up as you want and you can output the data as you want. So usually I create my own custom API and I output the data as HTML because Excel has some libraries that allow you to manipulate HTML elements, HTML documents. Now, the other advantage is that you can actually get the data from restricted spreadsheets without having to go through the OAuth Google authentication and you can set up your own authentication if you, if you want. The URL will look like this. So script google.com macros and then here it will come a long long ID which which is gonna be actually your secret ID but you can also implement second level authentication so don't worry too much about that. Now to do that let's go back to Excel and to do that we are actually gonna use the same again uh, HTTP request that we've used before, but in this case, it's gonna be to the Google Script API. And as I said earlier, you may want to concatenate that with a token to add a second level of authentication. Then if you set up your custom API to output the data as HTML, you can use this other macro down here to loop through the HTML table and get the data. So something similar to what we've seen already in the second method. Now, to do that, you need to go back to your Google spreadsheet and create your Google script API. You can actually do it directly here, or you can have a separate one, but it's easier and it's actually better if, if it's gonna be just unique for this spreadsheet to do it right here. So you need to go to Google Apps Script, and I'm not gonna show you how to do it in this video. I'm gonna explain that in another video because with this method, you will be able to get the data from a restricted Google spreadsheet. So in the next video, we'll see how to create your Google API. And actually, then you need to just deploy it as a, you don't need to do it as an API executable. You just deploy it as a web app. Once you deploy your script as a web app, you're going to get that URL that we've seen earlier. And you're going to use it in Excel to get your private data. So these are five different ways to get data from Google Sheets with Excel VBA. Thanks for watching.